So are you not powerful? Are you not already creating how you feel right now? And with that, everything else. Because the feeling is the vibratory state. I am creating how I'm feeling right now. How powerful, no? Yes. How would you do that if you were not a part of God and if you did not possess a portion of its power to create? I have a lot of buts coming up. That's okay. Just express them. Uh, I am creating how I'm feeling in this moment, but I still have parts of my life that aren't the way I want them. Well, the but how many things have you thought in the past that were out of alignment? Many. Well, there you go. <laughs> See how powerful you are? So all these parts in your life that you don't enjoy are all proof of how powerful you are. Just not in the way that you want to be. But nevertheless, it's pointing to your innate power that you can't escape creating reality. And it's giving you clarity. It's giving you notification, a Facebook notification, a little red flag, bloop, that you can click on it and say, oh, hey, this creation is not what you desire. And you click on it and it takes you to that creation and you see it and you go, unfriend <laughs> or unlike <laughs> or stop showing up in my newsfeed. And then, Ah, that feels good. You've learned more of who you are and how to master your vibration. And now you're going to the search bar and you're searching for a page that you would really enjoy that you haven't liked yet. In other words, it's not yet present. So what are your hobbies or do you have any kind of passion? Don't say no. I love to cook. Cook. So you look up, there's amazing, I don't know many cooks. It's not one of my passions per se, but uh, <laughs> I love to be cooked for though. Uh, so you look up one of these cooks on Facebook and you're like, wow, this is a really beautiful page. I love this. And so you like it and you add it to your newsfeed. And if you really love it, you even go, every time she posts an update, give me a personal notification. It works perfectly that way. Facebook is such a uh, perfect analogy for managing your vibratory state and choosing what you prefer, choosing to see only what you prefer. For example, so... Do you see that the things that are present in your life are reflections of past vibratory states? And to an extent, vibrations that are still lingering or that are still available to you? I don't know. You don't I don't know? know if I believe. Do they seem like random physical events that were out of your control? Uh, yes. Cool. Yeah. So, and do you believe that that is true? Do you believe that reality consists of an independent physical mole molecular structure? Or do you believe it's all a dream inside of consciousness? I um, love hearing that it's a dream all inside of consciousness. That's because it's true. Does yes. it feel good when you hear that? Yes. Then it must be true. So higher self agrees to you. That's what good feeling is. Good feeling is your higher self. Higher self is always ready to push a button. There's this red button that says no, and this, red, this green button that says yes. Whenever you have a thought that is correct, it goes <laughs> yes, and you feel good. And whenever you have a thought that feels bad, it's because the thought is untrue. Higher self goes, Ehh. and you go, oh. That's how simple the emotional body works. That's all there is to it. No need for psychotherapy. Just recognize when you feel bad, it's because you're thinking something untrue. When you feel great, it's because you're lining up with the true frequency of existence, of your true self. So if I tell you that everything is a dream inside of consciousness, does it feel good? Yes. Nice. You even start smiling. Know. You do. This smiling thing is not your delusion. You can't be happy unless your higher self agrees with what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Do you trust your higher self's wisdom? Or do you prefer your own brain self linearly oriented way of seeing the world? Um, you kind of have to make a choice. Do you wish to trust your higher self, which means trust what feels good and say respectful, appreciative no to the things that don't feel good, or trust what you've grown up with from this very dense physical slice portion of creation taught by your parents who are nothing but dummies, and then go, no, I think I'm right. My higher consciousness, which sees all these infinite parallel realities simultaneously, it sees all the parallel lives I'm living right now, or in most people's eyes, that's called past lives. It sees all my future lives, it sees all my alternate versions that are within my range of possibility and relativity. But no, I believe I am right. So let me feel really bad because I enjoy that because I just want to be right. Well, I'm really taking a step of faith because there is a, your yeah. message is very compelling, but I don't, I do want to trust my higher self, but I'm not. Compelling, you know I'm, what compelling is? Higher self going. <laughs> 
Green button. The, wi the wiring needs to be improved. <laughs> the wiring? Wiring. It's, in other words, already... the button is being hit, but it's, I'm, yeah. it's slowly getting through. It's not. You well, feel instantly bad or you feel instantly good, uh, but then you linger. Yes. It's not up to the channel. That's up to you. Your free will is honored. You destroy your joy. I linger, you mean I hesitate? You hesitate. You base your reality off of what you see physically, which is only the representation of your past creations. You, all these things that are, all these 10 things, you're doing the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're not alone, if that helps. <laughs> I, I know, I'm, I know I'm not alone. I'm not saying that to encourage, keep doing that same I thing. Know, I know. But you're not alone. This is, this is normal. It's not natural, but it's normal. So you got to be abnormal. You got to be annoying. You got to be free. You got to be wild. You got to be rebellious. You got to be adventurous. You got to be all in. You got to care about how you feel because how you feel is coming from the highest wisdom that you have access to as a human brain. The human based physical mind has no access to a consciousness higher than how do I feel in this moment? That's as far as our wisdom can reach in this physical creation. Now through that, you become aware of so much more and you become wiser in that sense. But this is your guidance mechanism. This should always be honored above anything else that you realize. And this is where so many spiritual people go wrong. They take their realizations and their perspective on it. And I always say you take your personality with you all the way into the realization of the absolute, meaning whatever you realize, you distort it. Whatever you realize, it's still your point of view of that realization. And people start to use that idolization, that realization, and their interpretation of it. And they start to value that because it seems so wise and so approved of by gurus with long beards that say the same thing and that seem really authoritative. And Isagadada said this, Ramana Maharshi said this, Buddha said this, so therefore I'm right. And they've forsaken the fact that it doesn't feel good, certain things. And other things do feel good. Desire should be suppressed. It's a distraction. It's your only entrance point into wisdom, any real type of applicable wisdom. Don't ever suppress your desires. Suppress everything else but your desires and your integrity, <coughs> your respect for other beings' free will. That and your desire, and you're good to go. Ignore everything else, and you're good to go. So, so you speak with great certainty. Yes. I don't have a beard, certainty. but I'm just as authoritative. No. I am not as certain as you are at this moment. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean I can't be or won't be. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Doesn't that feel good when you leave that open at least? Yeah, good. sure. That means because it's I'm true. Fine. I'm looking. Yeah. And I resonate with your certainty, I suppose, mm -hmm. or something. So. What you're doing is, imagine one of those, uh, how do you call that, the palettes that the painters have with the different colors on it. You're literally like seeking through the different colors, tasting a little bit here, tasting a little bit there, tasting a little bit there, and you're about to make a choice. You're still exploring your options, which is great. It's good. It's natural. But you're in the process of choosing which color you wish to actually use to paint your reality with. So this is good. You're simply exploring. You have a, you have a very explorative energy right now, like, what about this, 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 this? So it's good, there's, there's an openness there, but just know that you're about to make a choice and feel free to keep, keep tasting a little bit here and there, but just know that nothing is a given. It is up to you. All colors are the one's creation equally. You can choose blue, you can choose red, you can choose positive, you can choose negative, you can choose depression, you can choose bliss. The one will only go, oh, thank you. That's another way in which I can express myself. It doesn't experience the depression you experience in that sense. It only perceives more of itself. So it is up to you to choose what feels in alignment with your higher self, which is not the one. It still has preference. It still has a guidance mechanism. It's still guiding your theme. It still has relevance. But that should be honored because there's no way to live in the absolute while you're physical. There is no way to become fully the absolute one, which you already are in some level, from the physical because it's not relevant. We're not supposed to. We're physical because we have a purpose to. Otherwise, we would simply not exist in the way that we do. So honor your feelings. 
If something feels good, will you learn to trust that that comes from the highest wisdom you have access to? And if you do believe that at some point, ask yourself, do I really wish to negotiate with that? Do I really wish to argue with that? If this feels good, but my belief says, well, if I go down this path, my mom or my, my spouse will no longer love me, so let's not do that. But you know that that path feels so good, feels so fulfilling, and you know that that comes from the highest potential wisdom that only has your best interest in, in sight, and it sees so much more than you do, and it lets you know very easily through a good feeling, is it really smart to argue with that? I'm worried that I do hesitate and I do still have this tension feeling here and I'll just do with it what I do with it. I... So you hesitate and then you worry about still hesitating? Uh, well, it, it's just two coincident things. One is I uh -huh. hesitate and that's a problem because I don't, and then the other one is this feeling when I first awaken in the morning, boom. Sucks. Well, then you've led in the first thought without consciously choosing it. Correct. Yeah. But, but then you can still change it. It's still fresh. <laughs> okay. Choose another one. Okay. It's that simple. Choose another thought. And what is thought? Thought is simply the means by which you tune into an alternate reality state, an alternate state of being. It's not about the thought itself. The thought itself is like the hand that turns the dial on the radio station that turns it into a different frequency. What you want is the other frequency, the state of being, the feeling, the conviction, the realization. That's what you desire. Thought is one means to turn that dial. So use thought, use imagination to imagine the things that correspond to your resonance, such as? Joy and love and laughter. Good. Telling a good joke. Yes. Hey, yeah. anything else? Not that that's not good enough, but anything more specific, like in terms of something that really excites you and puts you on a trajectory of clarity and intention. I, I, um, not at this time. I just know I do want to feel good. Good. Well, that's, that's good. That's specific. Yeah. You want to feel good. Yeah. So how do you do that? I can ma manufacture a good feeling or what I've been doing is remembering how great I felt like two days ago this past month mm -hmm. when I was good. You can use your memory, which is a thought mm -hmm. of a past state of being to dial back into that vibratory state or a very similar one. So yes, you can use memory in that way. Whenever you felt great, think back at that moment. And if you do that for a certain period of time, say half a minute, you start to actually feel that reality once again, sometimes sooner, sometimes it takes a little while, depending on how much mess you are generating in between that thought. But if your thought becomes very clear and very pure, it can be very instant. Like it can be a second. <sighs> oh yes, of course. But this just takes a little bit of practice. But for most people, 30 seconds will do the trick. So, um, so you're using thought simply consciously as a means to tune into a vibratory state that you enjoy, right? You can always do this. So how do you make yourself feel better? by thinking things that are in alignment with the way your higher self sees reality. The only way to feel good as a human being is to be in alignment with your higher by self. By thinking those things that are in alignment, I'm going to yes. feel good. Yes, automatically. Because yeah. then the higher self is going to press the green button, which is going to send bliss waves your way endlessly. And the higher self has no limitation. It can go real fast. So it's all dependent on how much you can receive, how much bliss are you willing to receive, how many exact, precise, abundantly oriented perspectives do you wish to accumulate in your consciousness? How precise do you wish to see existence? How joyful, how blissful would you like your perspective of this moment to be? It can go as far as you can go further. You will never run out of bliss unless you choose that it's enough, enough is enough. It's okay. We get used to it. I say enough sometimes. This is enough. Okay. Ah, oh, that was fun. Now give me a break. Shit. <sighs> okay. A little less bliss, please. Okay, fuck it. No. Ah! And so you start playing with your frequency and at some point you become more and more masterful at it. And then there's no way back. You cannot be fooled. You become your own teacher, your own creator.
Does it feel good? Yes. Are you aligning your thoughts with, I could say mine, but let's say your higher selves right now? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Nice. Feels better, no? Mm -hmm. As soon as you feel bad, notice the thought that you had. You were dialing into a reality that's untrue. Oh, yeah, but what about, oh, but there's so much stuff. <sighs> <Ooh. laughs> Wrong thought. Ourself is kind of like a dictator. It's very precise. You did it wrong. You're thinking something wrong. You're thinking something good. It's really simple. It's not a negative thing. It's just how it works. It's meant to guide you. When you're thinking something wrong, you'll feel bad. When you're thinking something right, you feel good. How simple do we want it? <laughs> it's no other, it's no different than, you know, teachers spanking their kids in school when they do something wrong. Except this is actually coming from wisdom and love. But, but it's such a simple system. We've adopted it as human beings too. Teach your kids well. When you do something wrong, make them hurt in some way. Make them feel bad. We're doing the same thing as our higher self is doing. A little different, but 